will work, and that way I can put it up there later. Okay, so the idea here is that we have an array, and I'm gonna do an array of 16 at this point, uh, although there's other things that we could do, uh, uh, you know, that will work about as well, but let's assume it's a power of two. And the idea is I wanna store 16 elements. I don't wanna keep a bunch of extra data, and I want to be able to store the, uh, to very quickly find out the sum over some range. And so by that, I mean something like, I wanna know what the sum, <sighs> did it again. Um, I, I want to know what the sum over some range, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing yet again, but I won't try to number everything, but there's some subset of this, and I'll say, I wanna get the sum of everything in that range. And later on, I might say, I wanna change this value, and then I wanna get the sum over that range. And I'll change that value and that value, and then I'll get the sum over this range. And so you have a combination of these changes and updates to things as well as, a, uh, as, well as uh, trying to get the sum over a bunch of values. So uh, the idea of this is we are going to store things, we're going to store information that just keeps track of certain subsets of the range and we'll use at most a log in number of those that we have to sum up in order to get the value. So in this case, I'm gonna have the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. Each of those is going to store just the value that's at one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, and 15. Then for the thing in element two, I'm gonna store whatever's in one plus two. And whatever is in six is gonna store five plus six. And whatever is in 10 is going to store nine and 10. And whatever is in 14 is going to store 13 plus 14, whatever those two elements are. Okay, then for element four, I'm going to store the sum of one, two, three, and four. And for element uh, 12, I'm gonna store the sum of nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then for element eight, I'll store the sum from one to eight. And in element 16, I will store the sum from one to 16. And what we talked about in, uh, like when we went over this was for any element, and I'm, I might have trouble doing this, so I'm gonna try, I hope it doesn't erase. If I wanna get uh, the value that is stored in a particular range, I can sum up, you can always get the, the sum from one to that number by summing the things that sort of intersected along a particular line, okay? Um, so if I wanna know like the sum from one to five, um, I could take, uh, I could take, uh, ah, I'm not doing this correctly. There we go, okay. I can basically like look through the fifth element and see which things it's a part of, and I'm gonna to have to update those things along the way. Those are the things that include element five, for instance, okay? So if I update element five, I, what I need to do is update five, six, eight, and 16. And the way you can get that is I'm going to take my number X and I'm going to repeatedly add on the least significant one uh, from that. And for those, oops, need to admit people from the room, for those who do not remember what uh, least significant one is or didn't learn this yet. This means if I take the binary form of a number, it's the number that I get if the only thing I keep is the least significant one bit out of it. So if I have a binary number like one zero one zero zero one zero zero one zero, the least significant one is one zero, which is two, okay? And then if I add that on, the next thing I get, like if I were to add on least significant one to that, I would end up with one zero one zero zero one zero one zero zero. And now the least significant one of that is four, one zero zero, and so on. So I'm gonna show you how this gets coded up, um, but this is sort of the idea to keep in mind is you wanna have these least significant ones. And when you actually wanna look up a value, we're gonna kind of do the opposite. We're gonna take the number, we're gonna subtract off least significant one until we're down to zero. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to escape out of that for a minute. I will show you the, uh, the problem that we have. 
Okay, so this is the problem named Fenwick tree. Fenwick tree, also known as the binary index tree, is a data structure. Login updates, prefix some queries on the underlying data. We're gonna implement a Fenwick tree to support operations of two types, increment and element in the array, or query the prefix sum. So the prefix sum is the sum from one to n. Okay, and so as you can see down here from the sample input, the first thing that you're gonna read in is how many elements there are and, uh, and the number of queries we're going to have. So this is gonna be four queries on something of size 10 in this example. And we assume everything starts out at zero and we have two operations. One is we can increment an element of the array by some number. So this line says I'm incrementing element seven by 23. And we can query the numbers from one to n, the sum of one to n. So the sum of one to eight should be kind of obvious is 23, right? So we start out with 10 elements, all, all initialized to zero. We change the set element number seven and increase it by 23. And so when we sum up one through eight, the answer should be 23. And then we increase element three by 17. And so when we now sum up one to eight, we get 40. Okay, and sample input two, we've now got five elements and we're gonna have four queries. So in the first one, we're going to take um, element zero, actually, ah, I thought it, oh, it is gonna start from zero in this case instead of from one. We're gonna take element zero and change it, decrease it by negative 43, and we're gonna take element uh, four and increase it by one. And so if we take the sum of zero to zero, um, that's gonna be this, like everything less than zero, that's gonna be zero. If we do the sum over all five elements, then we get negative 43, okay? So I will say there's like the weird thing here, you wanna go A to zero, and this is gonna talk about AI being incremented or decremented by that. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what we're going to do. Let's actually look at how this would look in code and how we would code the whole thing up. So, okay, our standard header here. Okay, so um, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna define that least significant one function. Um, and we go through this, and if I have time at the very end, I'll show you an example of this, but, uh, but it, I kinda go through it in the, in the video, so hopefully you can check it there. Uh, but I'll, I'll define an inline function uh, just to make it slightly faster, although it probably, usually your compiler will automatically inline stuff for you nowadays. Okay, and it's gonna take an X and it's going to return the number that's the number that's the least significant one of X, the least significant one bit, and it turns out it's super simple. So we're just going to return X bitwise and with minus X. And because this is a twos complement uh, representation of numbers that works perfectly, again, check the video uh, that we described this if you're, if you're wondering about how that works. Um, there's another option that we could have here. So if you're a fan of macros, which generally um, I'm not, but the other option, and I'll get rid of this in a second, but just so you can see it, is you can define LS1 uh, as a macro, and that is just going to then be uh, X ampersand minus uh, X. Okay. And I put a bunch of parentheses in just because macros tend to give you trouble uh, if you don't. So uh, in any case, there you go. That's another way you could do it if you don't want to do an inline function. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so that's going to be, that's going to be our, our, uh, our function that lets us calculate the least significant one bit. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create some sort of Fenwick tree structure um, so I'm just gonna create a class and we'll call it FT for Fenwick tree. Okay, and the things that it need to be in the class. First of all, we will have a vector 
And I'll just note now that it needs to be a long, long, even though the data is each, each element is an integer. Since these are gonna hold sums of lots of integers, they can easily extend to overflow a, a regular integer. So you need a, a long, long. Okay, and I'll just call that A. And I'll keep track of N, which is going to be the size of it, even though that's not technically needed. And there's gonna be a few functions we have. So the first thing is I'll make a, a constructor for it uh, that will take in a size X. And when we do that, what that will do is it will create this vector A. Uh, so I will set N and say this thing is size X. And I will say A, uh, I will resize it to size X and I'll initialize everything to zero. So the Fenwick tree, all the elements of the Fenwick tree initially get set to zero. Okay, so the first function we have, it's the one I was talking about that I illustrated in the diagram. It's if we increment a function in the Fenwick, if we increment a value in the Fenwick tree. And so the point is, if I wanna increment like element five, I don't wanna just increment five, I need to increment five and six and eight, and 16, or actually maybe not, let's see, five, yeah, I think that's right, five, six, eight, and 16, and probably 32 and 64, and potentially a lot of other ones here. Okay, and so I'm going to create a function that will do this increment, I'll call it increment. And I'm gonna take in the element X, um, actually, maybe I should say, which element I wanna increase, I'll call it Ellen. Um, and the amount to increase, which I'll call val. So that's gonna be the value that I wanna increase by. And so what I will do is I will start increasing from that number and working my way up uh, from there. So I am going to do this until I have exceeded, until I'm trying to increment something that's bigger than the size of the Fenwick tree. So the example I showed you before was like 16 elements. So in that case, I'd wanna go until it's bigger than 16. But here, basically I'm going to say, uh, while the LM uh, number of elements is less than or equal to N, okay? So as long as, as, long as the element number still fits within the tree, um, then I'm going to update A sub LM by incrementing it by val. And then I will say LM equals LM plus LS1 of LM. Okay, so like in the example, let's think through it in your head for a second. The number five, the binary representation of five, and here I'll just, I'm gonna type it in code. This is not actual code, obviously here, but just so you can see it here. So actually, never mind, I've got, I've got PowerPoint, I can bring it up. Um, so if I've got a number like five, that's gonna have the binary representation uh, one, zero, one, right? Okay, so the first element that I increment is five. If I add the, if I take the least significant bit that, or least significant one number, that's one. And if I add those, I now get one, one, zero, and that's the number six. If I take the least significant one from there, that's one, zero. When I add those, I get eight. Is that right? Uh, one, two, four, eight, yes. Okay, if I take the least significant one from there, oops, zero, I'm gonna get, which is 16. And if I do it again from there, obviously I'm gonna get 32 and that is now greater than 16. So if I look back at this example, I had five, six, eight, and 16 that I did there, okay? So that's, that's the example that we, have, uh, that we have from all of this. Okay, so that's all we need to do to actually increment the Fenwick tree. That's gonna increment all of the stuff that's up above there. So the other thing that we have to do is we have to be able to do a range sum query. And so a range sum query says, I'm gonna have a, a range from one to N, and I wanna get the sum 
from one to n. Okay, and obviously, I hope obviously, that's going to return for us a long, long. Okay, so it's gonna be a function that's gonna take a number and I wanna get the sum of all the elements in the Fenwick, Fenwick tree from one to X along the way. So, um, I'll call that something like summation. Um, and so I can say while X is greater than zero, and by the way, I could just write, write while X, since that's the same as saying while something's not equal to zero, but just to make it clear of what we've got, I'll say while well, X is greater than zero, so as long as our number X is greater than zero, and actually maybe, let me rename this again. Okay, so while the element number is greater than, is greater than zero, um, I will take the summation, and I will add on the value at LM, and then I will take and subtract off the least significant one from there. And finally, I need to return the summation. Okay, and that is all I have to do to get the sum over some, some range. So again, if this is like, if you're like, I'm totally lost, why are we doing all of this stuff? Please watch the video, watch the part on Fenwick trees. It's the last section of the video after I go over segment trees. I think it helps to see segment trees first because it gives you the idea of kind of what's going on, but it's a different way of indexing that's a little bit more efficient. Um, and I will say it's very common that you want to sum over a range. It's not needed for that problem that I showed you, uh, but you can do a range sum query or RSQ uh, between a number uh, I and J. And so what that is, is you will just return the RSQ of j minus the RSQ of i minus one. Okay, so let me see, before I go and do a little bit more, oops, I'm gonna admit someone who's in the room. Uh, let me see if there's questions here. So I see Drew's been answering questions, which is good. Um, so, yeah, and someone actually says, yeah, we wanna do a resize to probably x plus one. And that is probably right because we're gonna number it from one to N instead of zero to N minus one. Thank you. Um, does that make sense? Okay, I think that is correct. In fact, in fact, if I had just looked at my notes that I made beforehand, that is exactly what I had in my code. So that's great. Um, Okay, so that's the, that's the idea. That is a Fenwick tree there. So if I want to, if I want to solve this problem, uh, this, this caddis problem that was out here, something where I'm going to read in a, a tree and process these queries, um, I'm going to, I'm gonna just read stuff in. Now I will say, this is one that I just happen to know. Um, if you do this with C in and C out, it's gonna to be too slow. Uh, C in and C out are too slow. You actually need to use C style input and output or you get a time limit exceeded on this. Uh, I found that out the hard way and beat my head against the wall for a while with it. Um, but in the end, uh, that's, that's the solution is to use scanf and printf here. Um, so uh, I'm gonna use scanf and printf. If you're not familiar with them, it's not a big deal, um, but it's a good thing to familiarize yourself with kind of C style input and output. Um, it's the same thing, by the way, it's sort of what the old Python string formatting was also based off of with C style formatting. So um, if you know it, you can also use it in some of the string formatting in Python, it's real similar. Um, so we're gonna read in two numbers and they are N and I'll read in N and Q. Um, 
I will then make a new Fenwick tree. Um, I'll call it my tree. And the size of the tree is going to be n. So I'm going to get numbers from 1 to n uh, that are going to go in there. Actually, I don't think I need that either. Okay, so now I'm going to process all of the I'm going to process all of the queries that I have. So I'm going to basically count down my queries from however many I had and go through them one at a time. For each one of them, I'm going to read in uh, a single character at the beginning. And I'm going to call that C. Okay. Uh, so and Dhruv says he thinks untying CN and using slash N allows it to pass. I think that's true. As long as you don't use end line, it probably works fine. Uh, okay, uh, I think that's true if you but don't use ENDL because that's going to keep flushing it over and over. Uh, so if you use CN or C out, uh, don't keep writing, uh, don't keep writing uh, ENDL because that's going to do an auto flush. Okay, so we're going to read in the character, and the character, if you remember, was it's a plus if we want to increment or a question if we want to calculate the range sum query. So if C is equal to um, plus, so if we get a plus there, make sure I don't do something stupid, so I'll check my notes here. So if we've got a plus, then I want to read in two more numbers, um, which are the amounts to scan in. And then I can call my tree and increment on it. And I'm going to increment A plus one and B. So notice. I'm doing numbers from one to 16 or something, or one to whatever, instead of zero to n minus one, it's one to n. So that's why I'm just incrementing each thing after I read it in. And the range sum query in a way that's very confusing does not do that. So here um, we will uh, read in just a single number, which is the number that I want to get everything to. And I will print my tree dot range sum query uh, to A. Okay, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we'll see if I typed all of this without an error this time, which obviously you should not do without stopping lots of times and checking along the way. But if I were to do this, hey, it worked. Okay, so let's try one of these examples here and see, see how this works. So move the stuff around on the screen a bit. So I'll try the very first example. Um, so if I run this, see if I've made a mistake along the way. So plus seven, 23. So that says I'm setting element seven. I'm increasing it by 23. Um, and then I'm summing from one to eight and I get nothing, although it'll show up later. Uh, just because of the scanf and printf. Uh, 23 was in fact the first thing output. And indeed, I get 40 at the end of that. Okay, so if I check the output, what I had was 23 and 40. And I had to, just because I'm doing this interactively, I have to press some extra junk on here um, just to make it work. Okay, but in fact, I get 23 and 40. If I try the second example here,
Okay, I get zero and minus 42, which indeed were correct there. Okay, and we could try this. And if you don't like using scanf and printf, we can try it another way uh, just to see how that works. And well, we're gonna, we're gonna end early today, although there's some stuff I wanna go over. But I wanted you to see how this works. So I'm gonna run through just another example so you can see kind of what the process of this looks like. Uh, let's take a quick one. So I'll go up to this one right here or something like this. Um, and I don't know if I can write, yeah, I can write on there. Okay, so if I, if I were to, you know, say, add a few numbers here, so I'm, I'm gonna just illustrate. So imagine everything starts out at zero. I'm gonna have 16 elements. I'm gonna set this one to three, five, seven, and 11. So I'll set four, six, eight, and 10 to three, five, seven, and 11. And then we'll do some range sum queries over that. So I'm gonna set up a Fenwick tree with 16 elements. Um, I'll just give myself like, I don't know, 10 queries. And I'm going to increase, it was, what are they? Numbers four, six, eight, and 10. Five, three, five, seven, 11. So element four um, by three, six by five. Is this right? Have I already messed it up? Okay, so I've set some values there. Now, if I wanna do a sum of these, let's say that I wanted to sum up everything from one to 16. So if I do question mark 16, I should get the sum of everything that's there. Oh, shouldn't have done that, but... Uh, 26 is 11 plus seven is 18 plus eight, 26. So that's the right value. Um, if I'd summed up the numbers, the A is gonna count as a question mark there. Um, if I sum up the numbers from one to uh, one to three, I should get zero. Okay, if I sum them up from one to six, um, I should get, I guess it was three in this case. Sorry, this input drives me nuts like this. So. Sorry, it's, yeah, it's easier to just redirect input and output. So um, that would be a whole lot easier than what I have in this case. Okay, so hopefully you get the idea there. Of, hopefully you get the idea of what's going on. We've got something, we can calculate ranges, you can update values in the middle. So the times that you're gonna wanna use this type of, this type of data structure are when you see a problem that you're keeping arrays, you're wanting to do a sum over the array, you're wanting to like add everything up. Uh, you can do things that are similar to a sum also, as long as it's something that sort of accumulates like a sum. Okay, so you can take like a uh, product will usually work, I think. Well, uh, yeah, I think, actually, no, I'm not sure about product, but there's some, I'm, I'm not thinking through very clearly, but there's some operations you can do besides addition uh, that'll work. But things like max and min do not work very well. Those are the cases where you wanna use a segment tree, which is the other thing I talk about in the video. Um, segment trees are much more of a pain to code up. Um, they're not as simple as this. You sort of create a tree, a binary tree over the whole thing. And it's a little bit more work to code all the different parts of it. Conceptually, it's a little bit easier, uh, but it's certainly more difficult to code. So um, Fenwick trees are really, really nice. As you saw, it was a, it was a pretty simple thing to code up. Um, and so that's what you'll get to do on your on your homework. Uh, now, if you have static data, let me mention this, I'll, I'll give you kind of a preview of where we're going later. If you have static data, if the data down here does not change, then there's other ways that you can do this much more easily. I can, I can just keep a running sum as I go along. So I can keep 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, 8, 8, 15, 15, 26, 26, and all of these are gonna be 26, okay? And then I can just look up a particular value and I get the sum from one to that value there. So as long as stuff doesn't change, I can just do a single running sum over the whole thing and that works even better. Um, but the problem with that is, if I then go back and I change something, like I increment this from three to, uh, to 10, 
Okay, so I increment it by seven. I would have to go through and update all of those elements after that. And you can easily see that this, that would become an order n operation. Whereas with the other one, since we're just looking at basically the max, the most updates we have to do is the number of bits in a number. Um, it's just a log n operation. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop here because I don't see any reason to drag stuff on. Um, okay, so yeah, Drew has some other comments there, but I didn't read them all. So if you have a macro Linux terminal, yep, you can redirect. Okay, uh, arbitrary range is still probably good. Okay, so let me actually, I won't stop sharing, but I will stop recording. Okay, um, since I do have just a minute, let me update you with some other things.